Imagine a road which never needs roadworks, never shuts because of bad weather, and accurately monitors and manages the flow to make sure the traffic keeps moving. Well, here at TRL, they're working to make such an imagination a reality. It's all the brainchild of Bob Collis, who's come up with the idea of the forever open road, and he's got a big list of things that that road needs to have. A road probably built in a different way, so gradually transforming our roads from a, a, a layer-based system so that we're building prefabricated, modular, but a, a system that can accommodate technology. So technology moves very fast, roads infrastructure needs to keep up. So roads that can use self-healing techniques, we know those type of techniques can be used for repairing buildings and uh, all sorts of different types of infrastructure, why not roads? Roads that you don't need to put salt down, you would actually have heating systems or chemicals in the, uh, in the asphalt to remove the snow and ice. So roads that actually are more adaptable, which is one of the elements for the Forever Open Road. Roads that are automated and the new ways of construction would allow that automation to come in. And roads that are resilient, resilient to climate change and resilient to changes in technology. The award-winning idea is to come up with a set of international standards which cover everything from the way a road is built and maintained to how traffic is monitored and controlled. We're not quite at the lab stage and we would hope to use this lab for uh, testing new concepts, uh, modular structures for example or drainage systems. And we are doing a lot of those for different uh, authorities, for government and for private sector but they're not necessarily fitting together, they're all excellent schemes but they're not necessarily fitting together at the moment in terms of the one vision and that's what we want for the Forever Open Road. As well as coming up with new ideas, TRL also works with road managers to test out their new concepts, all in the safety of its simulator. The driving simulator is a real car surrounded by display screens and the participants get in and drive the vehicle as they would their own car. We use the simulator in a number of ways. Firstly, to look at changes to the driving environment, so testing things like managed motorways. We look at changes to the vehicle, so things like advanced braking systems and dynamic headlights. And then we also look at effects on the driver themselves, so things like distraction, things like fatigue, the ageing driver, and we can understand how those things affect our driving behaviour. Car seat safety has come on leaps and bounds over the last 40 years. I mean, I remember as a child of the 70s not even needing to be in a car seat. I used to stand up with my hands on the seats in front of me or sit on the armrest completely unrestrained. And even though that's unthinkable now and that safety has got so much better over the years, here at TRL they continue to push the boundaries of car seat technology and testing. To pass the regulation um, the seat would be put through some component tests to see whether the buckle is strong enough, whether the webbing is strong enough, whether things like the adjuster down here whether they, it slips under impact and uh, so you have component level testing. And then, um, and then we'll put it on a sled to see if it will um, protect a child at 30 miles an hour. The Child Safety Centre not only tests car seats, but they can also help in their development. We have the technical service that will assess a product that uh, a manufacturer's brought to us just for testing. And then we have a different unit here that can give more help to manufacturers if they haven't got the sophisticated design um, departments that some of the multinationals have. TRL isn't just about roads, testing and simulation, it's about the future of the car as well. Among the simulators and the test equipment, there's also a lot of expertise analysing data to help solve our biggest transport challenge, a cleaner, greener vehicle. The, the, the energy that's required for electric vehicles, for example, and electric vehicles are just one of the low carbon vehicle options that will develop in the future along with fuel cells and much more efficient internal combustion engines. But the electrical demand of those vehicles is going to be very key to the uh, network operators, the electricity network operators that supply the energy. 
and the robustness of those networks has got to be assured in the future to meet the demand of an increasingly electrified vehicle fleet. So, for example, the development of, of battery-powered vehicles, the development of, of uh, fuel cell-powered uh, vehicles, and all the, the development of, of uh, power options such as uh, mechanical flywheels that uh, change slightly the, the way in which we uh, are put, putting together uh, the vehicles that we drive. While millions of motorists are thinking about the next journey they're going to take, tomorrow's journeys are already starting right now at TRL.